For almost a decade on my TV show, Interview with Ed, I've been interviewing extra-dimensional beings and consciousnesses from a number of different realms. Many of my questions have been answered, but with every answer comes more questions. Join me on my ongoing quest to find out who are we, why are we here, and where are we going? All right. Hey, everybody. It is Sunday morning for me, maybe Sunday evening for some of you. I know our special guest today, Widika, you, it is uh, Sunday evening, correct? Yes, correct. All right. Uh, well, welcome and uh, good to see you again. Wow. It's been, uh, I was looking at the date. Was it 2016 when I did that interview? Yes. Holy yes. moly. Oh my I goodness. I know. So much has happened in between. Yeah. 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 So um, thanks for coming on and doing this. And I'm um, looking forward to catching up. To Absolute you know. pleasure. And thank you for the insights and, and your amazing uh, initiative, this program and this platform. Beautiful. Yeah. As I was saying, it's better than that, my expectations, you know, how uh, just the, every everything is going and Got amazing members here with amazing questions. And I feel we can go deeper in this platform than if I were just to go on YouTube or, uh, you mm -hmm. know, with all that stuff. And, you know, you, you get a lot of newbies, which is good, but people who aren't very respectful sometimes. So in this way, we can really just dive deep in every every week. Yeah. And we seem to be going deeper and deeper uh, with, with each guest that's coming on. So are you ready to go deep? Yes, let's dive deep. <laughs> Absolutely. Sweet, sweet. <laughs> well, I've got uh, first and first off, let's just let's play catch up. You know, um, 2015. We've been in communication. We've talked over the years. Uh, done a couple of uh, live streams and whatnot. Um, but what's what's happening in Weedika's world? Where where are you at? Are you you had moved to the country as you had stated in the in the original interview, and then you like moved back to the city. Yes, and, uh, so, it's hilarious. So, let bring us up to speed. What's going on? So yeah, um, uh, I and you both, uh, we both rewatched the original videos just you know recently now, so that yeah. we knew where to start from. And rewatching that, it was so funny in a sense, because I thought, oh, wow, that actually manifested. And I could also mm -hmm. see uh, how much I had changed in several aspects. Um, so that made me even more excited for this catching up, which is, you know, uh, custom tailored to the interviews with Extra Dimensional series. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so the house uh, close to the woods definitely manifested. I went there. And then uh, this very exciting uh, two year, uh, 2020, 2021 started <laughs> to unfold. Mm -hmm. And um, I suddenly, I really did enjoy nature and living more out there. And then eventually um, it got too quiet. So mm. <laughs> I missed my network. Is there such a thing as too quiet? I guess there is. I, yeah, well, I love silence, but it's more like socially. socially. I see. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, and I'm not even that much of a social animal, but uh, mm -hmm. everybody needs some. And then I guess with the COVID situation, uh, yeah, I mean, even for me as an introvert, <laughs> there was a limit to it. And um, yeah, I suddenly felt, you know, I felt the pull back. And uh, I thought, you know, let's see if that could manifest as well. And it did with so much ease and grace that I really felt, ooh, this was definitely meant to happen. So I was out there for a moment and I'm back in town, <laughs> mm -hmm. in Amsterdam, that is. And okay. really loving it. I found a bigger place. Um, I made somebody else really happy because it was a home swap. Oh, okay. Um, home swap. So wow. So they went to the country? They went into the old oh. home and I went into theirs. Um, and it it's, it's a rental system that you can use in the Netherlands. Oh, really? So Very nice. They were super happy. I'm super happy. And I feel right now this is a platform or um, springboard for a new exciting adventures that mm -hmm. in fact actually asks for me to be a little bit central. And if I want to uh, catch a day or so in nature, I'll just leave for a little bit and then come back. Gotcha. That's what I'm doing right now. Okay. So that's... Uh, that's and you're just... still channeling Arjun and... And is that, that's all yes. going the way it's going? Any major shifts in that? 
I would say it has evolved. Uh, I okay. think as we all grow and evolve on our personal journeys, um, mm -hmm. the channeling practice also grows with you in a sense, mm -hmm. or I don't know, I guess it's, it's a matter of becoming more familiar with the energies that you work with and simultaneously uh, registering very clearly that the energies also ask from you as a channel to move through whatever you still got going on mm -hmm. um, more, even more, um, how do you say, devotedly, I guess, with whatever has been going on in the past few years. Oh, man, it's been so wonderful, actually, really. So uh, can I say COVID on the show? I can, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, yeah, we're not, we're not, we don't have no to limitations. deal with all that. So yeah. exactly. Say China, See, COVID. Exactly. Ukraine, <laughs> you know, whatever. This just shows, you know, how Wuhan lab. <laughs> yes, exactly. Everything, all of that. <laughs> Web, uh, lab leak. <laughs> right, lab leak, whatever you exactly. want to say. Yeah. So um, it just shows how, how, you know, careful we've become with all YouTube stuff. And um, I know, it's ridiculous. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so when that hits, it sounds really crazy, but when it really hits and my own country went into lockdown, uh, I came back from travels six days before everything, you know, locked down. Mm -hmm. um, I was, you know, there was this really strong sensation in me that this was super important in a good way. So I was moved to tears when all of that news be became, you know, it became a really thing, a big thing, a global thing. Mm -hmm. And I just felt this is it. This is why we came. And that was just a sentence that kept going through my head and I knew yep. it to be true for myself. And all the other light workers, this is why we came. This is it. Yeah. Now it's really happening. Now it's starting. It's kicking off. And I got so excited and enthusiastic. And I've been feeling that power, like an increased force ever since. I'm so happy with that. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I um, When it first hit, I was like, yep, here we go. You know, yes, yeah, so buckle so, up. <laughs> buckle up. The show's getting started. So, yep. uh, obviously not knowing form and fashion is going to take place and still it is you know it, we're in the middle of it and it continues to uh evolve um so how about your art are you still doing art still painting i okay. just recently shared for the first time i decided to actually uh record one of the processes of painting uh in a time lapse video mm -hmm. so oh, that's okay. my yeah so that's on my oh. youtube channel now i think i posted it possibly about a month ago, one of the vlog videos. So it's like, uh, I don't know, like a six minute video and you see how the entire painting uh, from beginning of blank canvas to final result, how it comes to pass. <laughs> and nice. that was really fun as an experiment. So yeah, I'm still doing that, but I just never recorded it. And that was a new, yeah, new adventure. How long is, does the piece, is, does, is, does usually a piece take? <laughs> Or is it different? I'm sure it's different for every piece. Yeah, because you don't always work on it every day. Um, I see. But in this case, I did. And it was nine days in a row for about three to four hours a day. Okay. Yeah, wow. square meter canvas. Okay. It's a meter, meter wow. I don't know. That's but. pretty big, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, and back to the channeling, you said it, it evolved in, in what way has it evolved? Um, if, if you can put words to it. Yeah, actually kind of like, it's almost like when you're in a relationship with somebody that you really love, like how does the relationship deepen? It's like super subtle. And at the same time, when I review channelings from years ago, I can clearly see the difference. So I guess maybe also practically my vocabulary has grown. Uh, my confidence yeah. has grown. Sure. I, I, seeing myself in the interview that we did in Sedona, I thought, wow, yeah. I was so courageous back then because I was scared to death. I was so super nervous. And you can't really tell. So Yeah, you did it. You <laughs> did it well. I you suppressed it, well. it beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> Not a recommendation necessarily, but. Right. So, wow, I was really going outside of my comfort zone because uh, I hadn't really done much for, um, yeah, you know, with a camera um, right. that was going to be out there. And 
If you had told me it would have eventually ended up on Gaia, I might have chickened out. Even. Okay. I had no but idea. What, what, what I didn't. I had no time. idea either. It was, no, I know. Kind of a, but it was just uh, YouTube, and it felt in the in the flow. Yep. And I felt yep. so guided, and every single time I traveled, knowing that I was going to channel on my travels, uh, mm -hmm. I've always been directed in the perfect into the perfect situations and meeting the perfect people. So I completely surrendered to that and trust that. But then of course there is a little, you know, ego layer that also needs to surrender. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think I have grown a lot in that aspect. I see. And well, so you're, you're sort of settling in more into that role because at that time it was, it was still kind of new in the sense that you were you you were doing the life coach thing you said for four months you switched over and you it kind of the channeling took over as as far as the life coach and the then channeling you, took over within four months within so the four coaching months. longer but then there mm -hmm. was like this transition period um where i started to do the channeling with my clients those that mm -hmm. were open for an experiment and uh that mm -hmm. went so surprisingly well that within four months it, i could let go of all other techniques because this was so effective and I sometimes still call it an experiment gone out of hand because <laughs> I'm still doing it I never knew I would be doing it for this long yeah it's so it's it's been steady and continuing and you're you know yeah. you're and I you're... still absolutely love it and I also still give myself permission to change my mind about that every single moment so there's this interesting constantly walking the um, um this dancing line Yep. <laughs> that acrobats dance on you know, in the circus. Um, I, it's like that. You're, it's constantly about keeping your poise, your balance, uh, your focus. And um, for me, it really helps to know that it's a new creation every single time. Every single time we begin the channeling, uh, I'm growing, I'm learning, they're learning. That's what they tell me. Um, we're really on this journey of evolution together and i'm really honored to be on that i i do not take anything any step of this way for granted just like that mm -hmm. so i'm constantly there with my energy with my focus in that way have you noticed um an evolution in the story like the yael story and how uh you know back then i realized i was like rapid fire uh, yeah <laughs> You know, Man. Uh, tell us about the Zetas and the hybrid programs and the kids and, you know, boom, boom, boom. Um, have you noticed an evolution in, in, in say, that that uh, origin story from the from your version of the IEL or Arjun's or version of the IEL? Uh, no, not really. Perhaps okay. what happens in the in the interviews that, you know, we just rewatched uh, and you mm -hmm. called the Grays the Zetas. So. I right. did notice in that moment, okay, you mean the grace. So I, I didn't want to dive oh, into the whole like term correction thing. Right, right. Now, and also because a lot of people still refer to the grace as the Zetas. I thought, you know, that was minor, not necessarily important to, you know, uh, pick on a word, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. um, but so, I don't know. Um, no, actually everything I rewatched, that conversation, I still feel that. I still okay. understand that to be the storyline that I've been receiving. Perhaps it's a little bit more loose in the sense that uh, the whole, well, the hybrid children, we could have gone into that. I, I, I kept noticing, oh, we could have gone deeper into this. We could have gone deeper right, into right. that. So we really kind of skimped the surface and you yeah. were very quick in your asking question. Yeah, yeah. But there was also a lot of enthusiasm there. And yeah. um, I think you touched on the sixth hybrid race. Yep. And that was answered um, along the lines of it was starts with the hybrid children. But then there mm -hmm. will be some people on earth who have the same vibration already. Mm -hmm. But I think the word uh, I was looking for back then that I would use now is anchor. They're an anchor and an accelerator. Anchor. An anchor. anchor an anchor okay. point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. if they do come to our planet, if we do shift to that version of Earth where open contact happens in that way, mm -hmm. we need to be ready for it, first of all, of course. Um, and if they then can be here, uh, those children, we, we really do start a whole new chapter. We're starting that right now. We're opening it up right now. Right, right. 
but we're starting a whole new chapter in the sense of our interstellar awareness and all of that. So I guess there is more understanding within me now about that as well. Yeah. So, and back then too, we were still, I know I was still trying to understand the the idea of timelines and, and, ah. and the variables, the infinite variables that create different timelines mm -hmm. um, and, and how we can shift from one to another. That was, that interview actually helped me understand a lot more about that. Um, okay. And, and since then, you know, just this constant, um, evolution of understanding how even the hybrid, hybrid children's story i feel has been evolving and that's why i asked has it shifted because for me at least in my circle um the whole idea of the hybrid children hasn't has shifted in the, in a in a big sense well and, tell me tell me uh how you how that has grown for you and perhaps uh i do feel the same but i haven't okay you know well, less less attachment to the physical idea of a hybrid child, uh, oh, and, yes. and and more of the and energetics, and seeing how it can manifest in many ways, from you know just our animals to uh, uh, you know plants and just everything. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have. It's not this idea of a physical hybrid child showing up in our reality doesn't have to be attached to that idea of, of, a, of a physical child yet. No. And, and there was touches on that in the, in, in the interview. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Where, you know, you mentioned uh, where we talked about nature and different things. And do you remember, I, Arjun mentioned it in, in the interview, but I think we had a conversation or you were working with two of my hybrid children when we were, had me on the rock doing some stuff and uh and and i had um you know i think publicly you know i had only spoken about a um uh a, one. A, a one male right and then you had picked up on a female which i had kind of an interaction with in one of my meditations prior and i didn't even mention that to you so that was kind of a confirmation that uh, uh yeah that we had, you know, I think I mentioned that to you uh, after you told me, you're like, hey, there's this girl and she's trying to come through. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, what's her archetype? And you describe her like, yeah, that's the one. Um, I didn't even know you had spoken about a male before. So I well, had no knowledge of you oh, okay, uh, right, right. coming out prior to the practice session you had with me. I see, I see. Uh, Just with Bridget, I had done this, uh, all right. the art yes. thing with her. So yeah, so, but there was very clearly two kids coming up yeah, yeah. the session yeah <laughs> uh and now i said i was just joking i was like now i have two cats a male and a female cat and uh, you know maybe that's maybe yep. that's how they've manifested for me um but uh uh but there was a mention of a clover um and arjun mentioned the clover boy and and i and i remember i think that was i forgot a conversation and i wanted to kind of follow up do you remember what what that was about? What that reference of Clover Boy was? I guess it referred to your private session that there was yeah, something yeah, yeah. in your private session that went deeper into the the symbol of the clover okay. and potentially the color green and uh, like a bringer of luck or something. Um, but right, I right. don't. This is the thing when I channel, I don't. don't I don't, don't have a hard disk for the private sessions. So so we. So in our back in our backyard, my uh, my wife has found about fifteen of these. Whoa. Every day she's <laughs> finding four leaf clovers. We have a little Amazing. patch of clovers growing in our backyard, and we thought I saw it, my wife had an, <clears throat> an interaction with a leprechaun in in Ireland, and uh, we thought the leprechaun took a jumped in her bag or you know hitchhiked or something and is in her backyard because of these this patch of clovers and then the four leaf clovers just are just like spitting out like it's crazy i've never seen i've i've never found a four leaf clover in my life <laughs> she's we've got like i guess at least 15 or more of these Amazing. and they're just and and they just they're spitting out like crazy and uh and it just caught my attention because again yesterday so <laughs> my cat uh, uh, El Gacto, whenever he gets close to the clovers, he like stops and he checks it out and then he, then he'll, he'll, then he'll walk. 
And I, and I was thinking about that yesterday, even before I saw, you know, the, the interview, um, and, and Arjun mentioned it, I was like, ah, exactly. there's something, there's something going on with these clovers. <laughs> so I wanted to sign it. Maybe it's something we can ask. It has Arjun happened again. before, um, that, that a client would have a hybrid child coming through that chose or wanted to be named like a specific flower and that mm -hmm. right at the moment of that session that flower which isn't a common one was in a vase in this woman's house for instance or uh, a week after the session a specific plant they discovered it in the garden it wasn't there before so things like that but if you mean uh, when you just uh, rewinding a little bit to to where you asked did the storyline of the hybrid children change for me? Right, uh, right. It, it didn't, but I've always understood our relationship to them right now to be uh, more metaphysical than physical. Sure. And I personally, I know I have hybrid kids, but I'm not attached to the idea of having to even ever see them in the physical. Uh, and I never had that kind of insistence because I feel when I have that, I push them away where we are right. now. Because our relationship right now exists out of synchronicities and observing right. like you do the little windows that are in our physical dream reality through which they're constantly speaking with us. So um, I knew that then, I know that now. It's kind of an assumption, I guess, um, to, to think other people um, are or are not uh, <laughs> expecting the hybrid children to see them in uh, real life. Right, right, or not? Yeah, yeah. That's something. That's something. I, um, I think we all. I think the hybrid children community, if it still exists, I don't even. I haven't been really following it. And Bridget is going to come on the show, oh, but nice. I think her her view as well. From I watched like an update that she did, and her view of the whole hybrid thing has also evolved. So I'm just very interesting. Yeah. Last video I've seen it as well. That's oh, a yeah, very yeah, yeah. interesting angle as well. Well, I guess this is a time wherein everything needs to be discussed. I think that was, it is always good to have everything be transparent. Mm -hmm. um, and she's been touching upon a subject that has been soaring around, uh, you know, the whole ET community for a while now. Right, right. Uh, and there, there's many ways we can choose to look at that. Um, do you want to hear what I got from Arjun on that? Yeah, so far? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was going to say, well, let's ask Arjun, but if you've already got some... <laughs> Some well, uh, yeah, share, because, yeah. well, I've had this interaction with him already in the beginning stages when I went to see um, a hypnotherapist for some extra um, sessions on interactions that I've had before mm -hmm. and that I found, you know, edgy, let's just say. <laughs> well, thank you. And I wanted to. Sense? Um, okay, so if you, if you go under hypnosis, I mean, yep. you can often still hear your own voice, uh, but, but sensations come to you that were of the time that you're being regressed to. Right. And right. it can be very um, confronting. And there were some situations where there was ET visitations taking place and I was brought to some, you know, uh, a place uh, that was kind of like medical and things happened that I literally felt the pain from so badly that I thought I was going to faint. So I actually During had the regression. To, yes. <laughs> so wow. it was so painful and that's, that, that had a huge impact on me for a moment. And then I realized, wow, um, it's good to, to, you know, look at all the aspects. But so what I, I learned from that, first of all, the little hybrid that was with me in that room explained to me when I chose to be conscious, because, you know, you, you travel there and then you can look around and all of a sudden you've got your entire consciousness with you now yeah. because i had that quote unquote had that um experience uh in a in between state and um at the time i was half asleep i don't know really how to say it that's actually how they choose to do these kind of um medical things sure. with most people because otherwise it would literally be too traumatic and it's not that um, too traumatic if you were uh, sedated completely. No, too traumatic if you would not be sedated. If you not be sedated, okay. Yeah. If you would be consciously <clears throat> aware of all of that. So mm -hmm. I realized in the traveling back to that specific incident that I had signed up for this, that I was okay with it, but that there was an agreement 
based on how they perform these actions, which is you kind of have out there. And then it's not traumatic because you may have like a, a whiff of a, like a little bit of a memory from it um, and that you can use in your life or not. Right. Um, because it's standard routine stuff, basically, the medical things often. Mm -hmm. And so um, I went there in a little kind of like early hybrid. It was pre-Sasani, like really like more grayish. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Said to me, well, you're choosing to be here in this way right now. And I realized this was my choice. <laughs> I wanted to see what was going on. Uh, and he says, you don't have to be this awake here. You don't have to feel all this like full blown. Right. Um, and this, and he also said, um, it's the vessel. He kept very, very abstract, making the difference between the spirit, the soul and the vessel. And it was so logical to him or her, I don't know. Um, and it kind of left me flabbergasted with the simplicity with which he kept repeating that, you know, you know, right. you know, just don't focus on the vessel. I mean, <laughs> and eventually it got so crazy that I said to the, the practitioner that I was working with, okay, um, I think I'm going to faint. Like I let my hands were tingling and everything. Uh, and then she, she counted me out of that situation, out of that memory. And that was good. So I got enough to learn from, but it took me a few days. And, uh, the fear side in me was like, wow, this is, this is pretty intensive. I mean, if mm. people, if there's people walking around who have these memories full blown all the time and who are truly right. traumatized by all of this kind of things. Uh, yeah, it is good to talk about that too, because yeah. it's all part of what we are transforming. And so I was blessed in a sense to, to do that journey in a private session and, you know, dive deep in that way, but it left me with some questions afterwards. And I did look at our June, like, Hey dude, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, does this have to be part of the whole thing? Like, and, um, he said, well, that's a chapter that isn't, it isn't part of what's going on right now anymore sure. right um so that it's you know that project has been finalized uh you did sign up for that you did learn from this but also and that was really interesting information he said the memory of such events uh, and the fact that we even can perceive any kind of fear-based theory that we can come up come up with regarding the grace, like wanting to take over our planet or something dramatic right, right, right. like that. Yeah. Our capability to come up with that kind of crazy um, uh, storyline that is mm -hmm. negative mm -hmm. is a reflection of the way we are also still looking at our own spiritual integration. And it's not like there is an enemy out there wanting to take us over is what he said. He said, it is um but say a multi-dimensional reflection of things that want to be integrated in your, into your species anyhow and if it wouldn't have been us and this really struck me if it wouldn't have been us or another et race or anything from the stars mm -hmm. it would have been i don't know like evil elves from the ground or some <laughs> sure, sure. You know, or, yeah. or uh, people that have the seas, just, well, we do have haunted houses and stuff like that. So yeah. it would have been something else from that nature, but from a different angle that would have reflected the same thing back to us. And I suddenly realized, wow, really everything is a mirror. And we are digging up a lot of dark stuff on our planet today. We are mm -hmm. kind of like <laughs> bringing everything to the surface to be seen. I do think this chapter of our beginning steps into the interstellar um, context and this opening up more for the, for the bigger public with disclosure and so on, this part of it needs to be shed a light upon as well. Once we start to see it as an extension of our journey mm -hmm. that we've chosen to walk through, um, all for our own individual reasons and as a collective. Once we start to own that, then there is nothing or there wouldn't have to be anything in us that fights that, negatively judges it or condemns it. Now, that isn't to say that, obviously, if somebody does, you know, something to you and it's painful, you don't want that to happen in that moment. You, you say, stop, right? Sure. In these occasions, 
um, the event that I got to witness, I wasn't conscious enough in the original event to say stop. And it was fine because, you know, you know, you're, you get your, um, sedation at the dentist and, you know, it's an agreement. <laughs> right. Know, runway, halfway, I, pulling I, your I, tooth. I think a big, a big difference though is people willingly go to the dentist to have their tooth removed for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. the big, the big thing that's in question and the big thing that needs to be addressed, the elephant in the room, so to say. Yeah. And this is where you have this divide in the community is you have one group of people that are the greys are all evil and demons because they did this to me unwillingly. And then you have the other group, which is kind of our camp, which is, oh, but it's a sole contract, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think there's, there's an in-between space in there that, that yeah. really that's where we all need to settle in. And yeah. for us to, you know, that the, this talk of was I willingly did i willingly do this mm -hmm, and it mm -hmm. and 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 right now you know certain people are like right now me no i did not willingly do that and there there just needs to be more of a dialogue and a conversation mm -hmm. than this or that yeah oh i, I mean? feel, fully you agree know. um so what i wanted to add to that mm -hmm. with that memory and during that session i was giving the opportunity to say stop or no mm -hmm. so okay. we get we get the um uh, moment of conscious awareness we all you know you're gifted that you will get that at some point like if you had these experiences in your life at some point it will rise back to the surface mm -hmm. and you get to choose how you wish to handle that mm -hmm. so i understand that on a soul level i chose to be part of that yeah. i understand that for the little gray being the vessel is like a very abstract thing and i right, should just right. focus on my soul and that was weird for me in that moment mm -hmm. that i could say okay stop i've had enough and that's when the woman counted me back out of it um and then i went into a deepening of my personal process with these experiences in my life and i learned to to find in myself an amount of compassion and love that I don't have the words to describe even. So that's what it eventually gave me. I did have to sit down for a moment and <laughs> take a little break and go, mm -hmm. okay, Arjun, tell me more about this. How does it work? Mm -hmm. See that everything is a mirror. Then realize that there is an energy in our collective and in me that was being reflected back to me in that moment. And in my willingness to own that and to realize that the pain that I was feeling was something that, okay, on the soul level, I signed up for. I mean, you could say that for a car crash you end up in. Yeah, on yeah. On the soul level, Anything. you decide to get into the car crash. <laughs> right. And of course, but that's, that's indeed, if you just say that, that's bypassing. Yeah. But once you, you know, I don't know, see it with your heart. And if you can stay present yeah. with the, the car crash or the medical whatever situation was traumatic for you i mean human medical stuff can be traumatic so it doesn't have so, to yeah. be yeah it really doesn't have to be extraterrestrial so i just felt this is i took a very bold step in um an energy that was almost um the word that comes to me is middle ages kind of like you know that was such a dark time. Everything was so brutal and ruthless and there was hardly any medicine and stuff. So if you had a problem, you know, that's the end. <laughs> so I really felt like I could stand in it and see it as part of the journey of our collective without judging it negatively. And that came with a huge release. Um, just understanding that these beings, they kind of gauge is that a good word? Where we are? Yep. Um, and then they interact, obviously, with their own agenda as well in mind. Uh, but the techniques and the tools that they use in that interaction could have only been used if we were of a vibration that would, quote unquote, allow that. So it is a little bit like when I loved your conversation with, uh, I'm not sure if I pronounced her name, name right, Deity? Deity? Uh, Diet, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Okay. Diet. Yes, um, because you really went and stood in that everything um, shadow side, basically. Yeah. 
and explore that. And similarly to, to how she explained, I think she explained that somewhat. If you are in interaction with something unwanted, you left the door open, basically. Yeah. And they help us see that. Mm -hmm. And so did the greys. The greys with, with the hybridization program and everything that was brutal about that, particularly in the beginning stages, mm -hmm. those, you know, um, really crazy stories. Um, Betty and Barney Hill, the time, Hill. And, you know, yeah. the first yeah. stories where you hear, you know, mm -hmm. pretty drastic stuff happened. Um, yeah. They were just being what they understood they could get away with towards us, where we were in our evolution. And we evolved and, and the process, the journey became more subtle. And I know of many clients who have had wonderful, intimate relationships with extraterrestrials, yep. which, led, which led to having hybrid children, which is such a different story from the whole um, uh, Petri dish. <laughs> And having yep. to do it that way, uh, right. that way only and, and things going wrong and, and, you know, seeing your partner in pain or stuff like that. Um, yeah. Very different. But so there is an invitation in that whole storyline, as I understand it right now, similar to what we are being asked to do on the planet to embrace, step into the light and in a sense, be the bigger person because, you know, well, I, I think be the bigger person without spiritual bypassing. Yes. Because, because well, that... you can only really be <clears throat> the bigger person if yeah. you have embraced it and evolved mm -hmm. beyond your negative judgment in a grounded yeah. way. Right. But yeah. I, but also being, the, you know, that, that way shower for others, because if you do spiritually bypass, and I keep using that word, but it's uh, others will see it, you know, and they'll call BS. Mm -hmm. And they'll kind of like the what maybe others that uh, aren't believing that, but just all contract story or whatever. So you really have to own it. You really have yeah. to be, yes. um, have cleared that energy in yourself mm -hmm. in order for, for that, for that to hold that yeah. idea of, Correct. Hey, yeah, this happened. It's, 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 it's good. You know, we're good with that. I've come to terms and I'm good with that right now. And we're, we're moving on, you know, next mm -hmm. chapter, but you really have to like own it and be good in order for others to, for it to rub off in the right ways for others to, so they yeah. can, they can absorb the, the good vibes and, and move on with their own stories. Cause, uh, you know, I don't remember if it was our interview about others, but yeah, I mean, I had originally heard about the hybrids not from this community, but from the darker side of the community, you uh -huh. know, more of the, <laughs> the, the people that were in victim mode and, um, and, uh, and they were in, um, you know, groups, they were in groups together to sort of talking groups, talking groups to help them yeah. through it. But yeah. instead of, you know, the sort of the, I think the interview with Ed and the, uh, this, you know, our community, the channeling community, it's like, oh, it's all like fairies and unicorns and it's okay. And yeah, it's happened. But that group is like, this thing destroyed my life and I can't function because of these damn grays. And I, and I evolved over to this group because to me, logically, and I'm like, it didn't make sense logically for them to start going into the storylines that they were having. Because many of those people like it's demons and they're tormenting me and they're sucking my soul and all that stuff. And I'm like, well, you're still here and you're still alive and they fixed other things that were wrong with you. So mm -hmm. are you hanging on to all the negativity? Why don't you just move on from the storyline? And I did. Yeah. I moved into, you know, the, ch the channeling stuff resonated uh, with me more than those, those groups. Mm -hmm. So, um, however, uh, um, those groups still exist. And those people are still out there. So in us, and instead of us, you know, completely saying, you guys are crazy and I'm the sane one, you know, I think there is that middle ground somewhere that I feel is where we're heading back into. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and it, and it comes back to sovereignty and choice. Yeah. And, and like you just said, you know, you were given the choice even at that time and you made the choice to come out, but at that time. Um, 
uh, I wasn't conscious enough. I think for many people who have had um, these type of interactions and visitations, particularly if you were brought to the quote unquote other side, whatever that looks like, uh, it could be on board of a ship or a different dimension. And I've had many of these um, journeys where I was lucid and could make decisions. But for these, apparently I had chosen to, just like I would at the dentist, I, I did say, okay, just right. take me halfway out of here. So most of them were like that when right, it came right. to medical stuff. Um, but then within the regression, I wanted to visit one of those. I, I suddenly got it into my mind. I wanted to see the dark stuff, basically. Yeah. Um, and it was just really interesting to, to have it, to see it be given back to me. And, and um, what I just wanted to say to you is that um, to make kind of a comparison about the level of consciousness that we're in as, as a species, I think with, mm -hmm. <clears throat> with interdimensional communication, uh, we've been growing into it and we started on a child level, kind of. And yep. you can tell children anything and they'll buy it, most of them. Mm -hmm. And as you become a teenager, you start to question stuff. Yep. So when it came to my personal uh, multidimensional experiences with ETs and on the medical front of things, uh, I suddenly started to question stuff. And I thought, okay, show me. I'm just going to have these sessions and I want to see what happens. And then it was impressively overwhelming. <laughs> but then I got the choice to say, okay, stop. This is enough. And right. this woman counted me out of it. But by my choice. So I realized that and this is what Arjun also told me. I have always had the choice. It, I just wasn't aware of it. Teenager enough yet. Right, right, right. To want yep. to go there and, and dig in the dirt and see what's been going on. So, but of course, it's also, it's both. You're, you're consciously evolving and becoming more aware of everything that's happening. And like you just said, a lot of these contactees have, have had wonderful uh, medical procedures uh received that helped them yeah, yeah and um i don't even actually know what they were doing in this session <laughs> um i didn't judge whatever they were doing because i haven't been bothered by anything physically as a result sure. so i thought maybe it even sold something that i don't even know of yeah uh, I, it was just so impressive to feel the pain level suddenly in a, in a in my body being physically and present in this um uh, a hypnotherapy session mm -hmm. it was a wake-up call it just let me know you know okay there's a lot of layers to this we can dive in quite deep i can see how this might be traumatic for some people but i also see that and it has been for me at times definitely that's how my story started and i did share that in the interview the original one that i went to see a, a therapist at 24 yeah. yep so i did go and that was an ex-hypnotherapist the guy who helped me understand what was going on but I've been on that verge several times in my life where I wanted to dive deep and see what, what the whole picture is. So I've been constantly investigating that. And that's what yeah. I say. What, that's why I said in the beginning of this chat, uh, I don't take anything for granted because I can see this is a constantly evolving storyline. And we are really, this, what you're doing right now and these interviews, this is cutting edge. Um, really bringing it to the to the let's ask everything yeah, and yeah. and there is a part in the in the channeling world where everything is immediately brought back to source and of course that's true you know we are all one mm -hmm. <laughs> there is no conflict there and you can align with that at any given moment um and i love that and i use that in my life a lot yeah. and simultaneously there is the teenager part of our consciousness that mm -hmm. wants to look around, see everything, make conscious decisions and train its own discernment, which I think is super important too. Yep. It's both. Well, I think you kind of answered it for me. Um, I think the solution to um, the, the traumatized uh, versions of people who are, you know, and still adapting the the story, right? The story that we have contact that the Greys or the Zetas are real, and that were, you know, they they were taken. Um, but I think the 
way to help them out of that uh, spiral is to find the choice points. Yes, to, exactly. Like, like yes. you found, right? You found in your regression that actually, hey, even though because you just don't remember because your memory has been wiped, but you had mm -hmm. a choice here, you had a choice there, you had a choice there. So yeah. we need to find and identify the choice points for each of those people and yes. make them, or not make them, but uh, help them come to the realization <laughs> yeah. that, that, there were, that there were choice points and that this um, wasn't as doom and gloom as, uh, you know, some of the people are making it out to be. And then, and then we need to do the same. Now, you know, that's that ET story overlays with our current uh, societal uh, construct of um, being taken without our will, you know, giving a thing without our will mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> losing my job or, you know, yeah. or, you know, you have to do this or else, but and then people now are are dealing with those ramifications. There's, you know, lawsuits, a $10 million lawsuit just came, went through. Um, you know, the military is in, in up in arms because many people are getting sick and, oh. uh, you know, having injuries and damages from wow. getting the jab where, wow. um, and there's, you know, lawsuits ensued, right? And uh, again, we need to remind people that there is always a choice point. You yes. know, because it's that same type of mentality that we're dealing with now. Where are we yes. taking against our will? Are we, yes. you know, putting a gun to our head and we're doing these things? Mm -hmm. And yes, there needs to be a, a retribution and um, a discussion and, uh, and and accountability towards the people who are um, projecting these uh, control mechanisms. But there also needs to be on the uh, so-called victim side, the recognition that you had a choice point. You mm -hmm. had people like me screaming, hey, this is the bad thing, guys. You know, and, and you had a choice back then to demonize the messenger on uh -huh. Twitter or wherever and, and, and call them crazy or actually do your own investigation and find out you know, the truth for yourself and then make your yeah. own choice point. You know, yes. I, or find that choice point and make make the choice at the time. So anyway, and sorry. if those people would do what you just said, if they would allow themselves to find that choice point, yeah, it would also prevent them for, from automatically sliding into some kind of permanent victim role. Right, right, right. They they could pull themselves up by their own bootstrings, realizing that hey, this whole storyline that I um, I manifested, I co-created it, I'm a right. part of it. And that's what I had to see when it comes to these interactions. Um, and I can use whatever clear memories I have or session memories I have. I can use that now, no matter how may, maybe crazy this sounds to some people, I can use it in my um, journey of embracing humanity more. Absolutely. I learned to love humanity more and our own uh, ups and downs and to look at that with compassion. And that's why I said, you know, I, I can I cannot describe the level of unconditional love that flow flowed flowed flew. Wait a minute. Flowed. <laughs> you got it. Yes. All right. Okay. Flowed up from my heart when I found a way to look at that a specific um, hypnotherapy event uh, from true love without bypassing. So you know, yeah. including all of it. And realizing, okay, wow, I can use this. This is this is powerful, and it's also in me. And the whole universe is is me pushed out in a sense. It's us mm -hmm. in a reflection form, and I really felt it. And then I saw how that experience actually helped deepen my relationship to uh, Arjun and the Yael because I have had moments. I mean, of course, I've noticed that whole discussion going on. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. on social media with the greys are evil and they're here to take mm -hmm. over, you know, whatever. Um, and it has been gaining in popularity, this storyline lately. Well, uh, we can get into that a little bit later, but yeah, that's, okay. uh, it's been I've gaining. It grow. It it's seems not to grow. organically growing, so to say, if you know oh, what I mean. There are there's, promoters, there's, for sure. <laughs> and, and there's agendas at hand, too, that how oh, I that wanted to. I wanted okay. to get into with Arjun later. So, well, oh, interesting. Well, yeah. I didn't even think about that yet. Like I didn't even yeah. go there yet. But I saw that it was growing. So that's what I saw. Uh, and um, 
I went into lots of self-reflection um, discussions <laughs> with myself on all of this, realizing, you know, it would have been a lot e easier if I had just, you know, some kind of contract with the Pleiades or, you know, with Sirius <laughs> because it, they didn't do all that stuff, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. So, you know, and then on the other hand, I realized, you know, the hybrids and the little bit edginess that is connected to that mm -hmm. and um, getting down and dirty and, and being with, really with humanity. Um, through our evolution, which is edgy. This is an amazing story we're moving through together. And they're so resonating, so close to that, reflecting back to us our quote unquote darkest possibility for future mm -hmm. and the lightest one. So there's this extreme right. polarity in represented by the hybridization program onto itself. Absolutely. Um, that's why really... it's such a fascinating story. I think that's yeah. why, you know, why I'm you drawn to it is because there are so many reflections in it yeah. that we can use in our, you know, this life, this world to, yeah. to, to then, you know, overlay and, and then like, Oh, Oh yeah. Okay. 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 What did, what happened there? Oh, they did that. Yeah. Okay. Well, what if we did that here? You know? And then, Oh yeah. Things get much better. So it's, it's, it, in a sense, it's a, it's a map for how to navigate mm -hmm. this, this reality. Um, in a very close to your skin kind of way. Very, yeah. very, like it really touches our species because literally there's a genetic bond, so many reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and then I realized, you know, that actually fits my character. <laughs> I can't deny it. I can see how um, I could go into victimhood. Imagining this super complicated species. Why not, you know, like simple Pleiadians all love and light. <laughs> no, no, no. No. <laughs> And then I thought, yeah, no, I would get so bored so quickly. And yeah. this is way more interesting. So I'm grateful for where I'm at with them. And I love the deepening of my own personal journey as a result of that as well. Yeah. Awesome. And I am, you know, I got a little more bold in, you know, talking about these things as compared to our first interview where I can see I was really like, hello. <laughs> Very well, yeah. careful about the, the contact experiences that I had and, and such. I was just... Oh, I see. At the time you weren't as... You were just kind of coming more, out of the closet. Yeah, I, I was closer to the coming out of the closet energy still. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I think at that time, you know, I don't know how many platforms were offering that type of a conversation. I think mine may have been... None, the, I guess. You know, yeah, I think we were <laughs> just starting to have it collectively. And, and I was just super fascinated. Uh, you know, with that conversation from my research and everything, I'm like, why is nobody talking about this? Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be the one to go out here and start filming this to have a conversation, put it out there, and um, I'm, I'm glad I did. Uh, you know, look where it's led to. Now we're yeah. again where we're at. Like you, you know, thank you for saying cutting edge, but because we've laid that groundwork way back then. Yeah. We yes. can go deeper now and we can go into these layers of, you know, victimhood and spiritual bypassing and all these things. We can have that conversation because we had the other conversation that people are just starting to have yeah. right now. And they're mm -hmm. still in that phase of, oh, is it evil demons or, <laughs> or is it going to, or, you know, or wait, it did happen. They're finally admitting that it happened or that ETs are even real, uh, but are they evil and they're going to come and get us and, you know, that, all that baggage that comes with that but at least they're you know they're starting to get into that the, yeah. you know the they're starting to have the conversation which uh, i'm a big promoter of you know that's why mm -hmm. anytime tucker carlson is talking about ufos i'm like yes yes it may not be the conversation that i want you know but just the fact that it's being had and on a big platform and on a big yeah. platform that's a good thing so yeah i agree uh, so I, you know, I'm all for it. I don't, whether it's positive or negative, I think it's all positive just to have the conversation at this point. Exactly. Exactly. Agree. Cool. Yeah. We, we mentioned pharmaceuticals. So we mentioned that in the, uh, in the original interview back then. And now it's, there's. It's uh, so funny. Yeah. Yeah. And then and we that, spoke about it together. You brought it up and that yeah. was so, so synchronous. Well, and it's m more relevant prevalent now than ever mm -hmm. and the idea uh and uh, you know i think to get back to this um to look at the vibration and the frequency of 
let's say the pharmaceutical industry as a as a, an entirety, because obviously through scientific discovery and uh, certain medicines have been found which are good. You know, that we're not. I don't want to demonize that whole thing, but if you look at it from the whole, uh, you know, in the frequency and vibration, in a sense, it's a um, uh, a sovereignty killer. I call it. Um, because the whole design of the mechanism of the uh, industry, um, it may not be projected out this way, but it definitely has taken on this archetype, uh, take this pill and you will be fixed. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of a shortcut way of, um, of he of the healing modalities. Right. And then. Uh, we are the gatekeepers, the the ones who make these uh, fixers. We are the gatekeepers, and you must come to us to get uh, the key to the fix, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at that from a vibratory uh, frequency, in a sense, you're uh, of course you're going to be dependent and addicted, and you know that's why we have such a huge you know problem with addiction when it comes to that industry. Is because you know I need my fix. I need my fix, and this is going to fix me, and this is going to make me better, uh, as opposed to finding it yourself, you know, or yeah. in other ways, you know, doing the internal work, doing the healing, whether it's an internal process or going out to the woods and picking some herbs and mixing that up, because that's still there's a process involved, and there's a um, there's an understanding of the and a connection to the natural product where it feels you know pharmaceutical aspect is just this like you know the the the, the surgical aspects of dissecting and taking from the plant only what's needed to do this and have this thing so you're losing the um the process you're losing the essence of the beginning states of of what mother nature you know, originally grew. And, um, and I think this is where we're getting into issues with, um, again, the, the magic of some of the pharmaceuticals, I take pharmaceuticals, you know, there's some magic in there. Basically what I want to say is that within that industry, we have created some really, uh, magical things that have helped, uh, that can help humanity evolve in certain ways. Right. Um, and it's, it's the, pushing it's it's the losing sight and taking advantage and doing things you know and going back to bigger picture of the vibration the frequency of of that world which we discussed in that original interview and i think it was do you know what led to that conversation do you remember what what it was something about yes uh, we were talking about um we were talking about the term healer and mm. um how that can also um um, oh, that that's right. meaning to do so it, it, it can in, fall into a category where um um well let's say seekers yeah yeah uh, be, yeah go into a codependent state towards a facilitator and why i didn't really like that idea right. so right, we were right. talking about that which led to oh that's actually a one-on-one -on -one with how the pharmaceutical industry today exactly. is promoting themselves exactly exactly so it's again a sovereignty killer so yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to be pharmaceuticals. It can be with the even can be many you know, things. The the guru or the healer that's gonna yeah. save Same. me and take all my pains away. And we're having, you know, that more more prevalent now than ever with ideas of some circles. And I'm sorry if you are part of these circles, but uh, I'm gonna call call a spade when a spade, but you have some uh -huh. of these Trump. Um, savior people that think Trump is going to get back in the office, oh, yeah. and save that. the world. And <laughs> I'm not one of them. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I don't think we have too many. But for me, that isn't a thing because I don't think there can be that load of pressure on any one individual, and I yeah, don't yeah. think it's healthy to to project our uh, desire outside of us in that way. It is very disempowering if you ask. Right. Me. That that's. Again, that that's sort of my answer to my uh, conversation piece with with people in that camp is, um, hey, I'm I'm all for it. I, you know, I I don't hate Trump or love him or whatever. No, and, this what it is. He plays a, an interesting he plays, part. Yeah, he plays a very interesting part in this <laughs> news all the time. But um, 
but the the danger in sort of uh, believing that storyline is you're not taking personal uh, responsibility or personal steps or actions mm-hmm. in your own life. You're just waiting. You're waiting for that. And and there's a lot of people that 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 go into the um, um, you know, the same with it, <clears throat> the good ETs, right? Or or the big flash, right? Have you heard that storyline? Uh, the, the, oh, is that what we? The big we'll flash suddenly is to, awaken, and everybody's going to be awakened, yeah. <laughs> and it'll be like this thing. And and I'm like, I, you know, the reason none of those storylines work for me is because, um, and I'm all for them. I'm like, yeah, well, I welcome the Trumps to save the world. I welcome uh, the big flashes to save, you know, humanity or the good ETs or what, you know, are going to take out ships or whatever it is. I, hey, I'm all for it. I'm not saying no. I'm just saying. Highly unlikely because we're here learning a lesson as a collective, as individuals of how to do this ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. And and the danger in uh, relying on any of these sort of savior complex ideas is you everything becomes stagnant. You don't move. There's no evolution. You're just waiting for this, this uh, magic uh, pill, right? That's going to save me. And we see how that goes, right? We see how the magic pills, what do they end up doing is there's a lot of backtracking and work that now has to be done because you believed that there was a magic pill that could save whatever, you know, or, or take care of, of the issues at hand as opposed to that in a sense, that's spiritual bypassing, you know, all these ma- ma- magical pills or, <laughs> you know, the Trump yeah. pill is, is just a bypassing the work that needs to be done. So, um, uh, you know, and this idea of, you know, Nasara, Jasara and, and these finances that are going to be released to humanity. And you're like, wait, do you understand how finance and the economics work? There's no <laughs> way that could ever be the way it's, you know, the, the way it's being projected. It's like when you wor- go to economics 101, supply and demand, that just it's not going to work. <laughs> uh, oh, so yeah, any- yeah. So, that uh, was my... Yeah. It's just like, you know, not in this reality, maybe in another, you know, seventh dimensional reality that could be working, but we got a lot of work to do on this planet. And in all of these um, magic pill concepts aren't going to get the work done, right? I, even though, you know, I know we can test anything and we just, and boom, we're there. Yeah, I know that. But that's not the way the mechanism and the action, you know, action reaction and this density that's not the way things work so um uh, anyways I, I just found that we had that conversation back then we're continuing to have the conversation now and we have a lot of real world real time topics that we can relate that energy to right that the, the vibration and frequency so yes. good stuff yes <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome um well how do you feel about jumping into some channeling i was thinking we could just maybe when you come out of it uh Mm -hmm. if you're coherent enough to then do some follow-up um q a's and all that stuff after the channeling if that sounds okay yeah if you just uh then give me a few moments exactly to find your channels literally what's your process again i i remember we did a meditation last time do we want to is that I still do that. Uh, yeah. It may seem a little bit, I don't know, um, time consuming, perhaps. It's just like an, an additional five minutes. Um, yeah. I still do that uh, because I do experience that, even though I could just close my eyes and tune in and hi. Mm-hmm. Uh, it adds to the depth of the transmission and mm-hmm. it allows other people to join into a much, you know, like a closer de- degree. Mm -hmm. because it's also like a guided meditation and i know the ayel are super excited always about connecting to us energetically and when you just take that little breath and a little distance from the conversation we just had you really clear the whole screen for new um yeah things to be perceived (laughs) yeah definitely it gets everybody else on the same page too so exactly yeah totally Okay, so so I'm just going to close my eyes uh, and do the guided meditation. And by the end of it, you know, when Arjun is ready to speak with you guys, it will be uh, obvious. <laughs> okay. All right, see you later. All right. <laughs> so if you want to join, 
in this little meditation and you can start by taking a nice few deep breaths in and out. And with every out breath, see if you can release all the tension that might still be in your body or in your mind at this moment. And then gently bring your focus to your heart if you wish. And imagine how from your heart, a silver line of energy begins to flow down through your body. Down through your belly, down through your legs, all the way down to your feet through the building and into the ground. And imagine it sinking deeper and deeper, moving effortlessly through all the layers of the earth until eventually you reach the center of the earth, the heart of the planet. And whatever this looks like to you right now, in your imagination, it is absolutely perfect and you're being warmly welcomed to make a strong connection to this place in your very own way. When you feel you've made that connection, imagine that earth energy then flowing through your silver line, trickling back up same way you came, through all the layers, returning to the house or the location that you are currently in. And imagine that earth energy then flowing into your body, starting at your feet and moving up to your knees, embracing every single cell along the way. From your knees to your hips, the same thing happens. Every cell begins to harmonize, resonate in harmony with that earth frequency. Through your belly, up along the spine and into your chest. And with the next deep and calm breath in, imagine that earth energy then flowing into your heart and filling it up completely. And then if you wish, imagine that same silver line from your heart now going on a second journey, this time moving upward from your heart through your throat, through your head, out through the crown chakra, through the roof and into the sky. And higher and higher beyond the clouds, beyond the ozone layer and into the universe, your silver line try, flies effortlessly amongst the planets and the stars until eventually it reaches the central sun of your solar system. And here too, you're being warmly welcomed to make a strong connection to the center point of the sun in whatever way feels logical and natural to you right now. And when you feel that you have in your own way, also make that connection. Imagine that solar energy too then flowing through your silver line, traveling back across the universe, returning to your blue little magical planet that you call Earth, returning to the continent, the country, the region, the house, and eventually the room or whatever other situation you are choosing to be focused in right now. And imagine then that solar energy too, flowing into your body, starting very gently at the top of your head, moving through your head, through your neck, into your chest. And with the next deep and calm breath in, imagine that solar energy too, flowing into your heart and merging the earth energy frequency that was already present there in a never ending golden spiral. And if you wish, you can put one or both of your hands on your heart for a moment to anchor there, to land there. For this is where heaven meets earth within you. It is the door through which we speak, the window through which we see at this moment of your time. For dear friends, we are here and we thank you for the invitation of this co-creation of this here and now. How can we be of the service? Hi, Arjun. Um, Hello. Good to talk to you again it's likewise uh, it's, it's been a while and not a while and so much not for you time. i would assume um perhaps with your time bending um time perception uh, reality um how long has it been for you to me this feels as a continuation of the conversation we already had 
Oh, very nice. Very nice. I've got longer hair and a few more wrinkles, but that's that, uh, uh, I will also, uh, since I refreshed myself yesterday, I kind of, uh, I'll, I'll take, I'll take it from, uh, where we left off. Oh, thank you. Um, However you wish to proceed. Well, I've got, uh, I, I would say I'm a bit wiser uh, with the wrinkles and the hair comes a little bit more maturity and understanding of, of where we left off. So, um, but then again, maybe not, I don't know. It's still, still if young, you say so. still new in, in all of this. But um, as as we've progressed in time and a, b- a big part of our conversation was about uh, disclosure and connecting in with different different races and the IEL being at that time was the most likely race for us to um, have this this idea of disclosure within the, uh, the human collective. Are we still on that timeline or is the IEL still... Uh, our closest in line for um, breaking the ice, so to say? We are, you could say, in a tie with Pleiadian energy, among others. Okay. Among others, can you name some of the others? No names only. Can we say that? In those cases, you will find that there is a great physical likeness to yourselves. And this is one of the ingredients on which the decision of what species will be quote unquote first in that case is being made i see because we wish for a smooth introduction if we would start with for instance the octopi races that right. we are also in contact with we understand that that might backfire. Yeah, that could scare some people. Uh, or the mantises or, you know, some of the other... For instance, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, so with this uh, ramp up of the discussion, uh, also comes a ramp up of agendas, as I mentioned before. And it's becoming quite clear for me that the uh, disclosure narrative is being steered to allow certain voices in and certain voices are kept out. And this is in alignment with all of the censorship and different narratives that are being pushed out in our human collective about other things. So the disclosure topic is also being heavily controlled and censored. And this push for a negative oriented idea of, of what they are, a threat, so to say. That's the word that's being used quite a bit in the collective news media broadcast of disclosure. How do you see that developing in the coming years? Do you think the threat card will be played more? We know here in this group that that is not the truth, but how do we help our fellow humans move and navigate through the idea of disclosure being a threat. Thank you for this question. We understand. (laughs) Thank you. So first of all, when you speak of narratives, Mm -hmm. storylines, censorship, and so on, you are looking at a acceleration of energy vibrations that were already present in your collective. You are pushing to the surface that which, in a sense, is no longer working for you and making it obvious to yourselves. The idea of an increasing set of bureaucratic rules, strict guidelines, and storylines that are pushed into a certain direction, even though intuitively you feel that that for you, perhaps as an individual, is not truly with the flow or not in alignment with your integrity, invites the human species to step up their game, in a sense, and allow more transparency through each and every single one of you. You are all, as individuals, invited to become of the energy frequency of that which you would like to see more of in the world, even though a tiny few, because really that is what you are dealing with, are, you could say, pulling the strings in what you understand to be your maths, media, events. You, as quote-unquote consumers of that information, are the grand majority. You 
can stir the energy vibration net in a very different direction if you choose to. This invitation lies on the table for all of you. When you ask us, how can I assist somebody else to quote unquote stay away perhaps from the idea of the fear narrative when it comes to ET contact and disclosure, we would say, allow them their journey. Understand that if fear gets triggered in one or another person, it gets triggered in them for some reason. It is a stepping stone on their journey of getting to know themselves better. Perhaps we would say that the most soothing way to be present and to be a gift for them is to be there with them as they are going into those sensations, those emotions and negative belief systems. Perhaps if they feel they can trust you, you can go into a dialogue and ask them, why does this scare you? What kind of ideas do you have when it comes to extraterrestrial contact and so forth? Open up the dialogue further than it has been opened up so far for most of you. Explore and be there for them. Be in your own integrity, in your own state of unconditional love and inner knowingness and radiate that energy vibration by simply being in it and being there for them as a friend, hearing what they have to say, allowing them, in a sense, taking them by the hand, allowing them some presence in their journey down into that dark basement where those suppressed beliefs are that make it all look so gloomy and dark as they believe it is. Because it is only because certain negative belief systems were already hidden there, hiding there in that basement, you could say, of their psyche, that such negative narratives find a landing ground in these people. They are susceptible to these ideas because there were things inside of them that still want to be seen. So the most loving thing that you can do is be there for them as they step into that basement, explore what's in the dark, and with your assistance, if they choose to take it, find where the light switch is and discover that there is really nothing to be afraid of, whether you are looking at storylines that are woven around what other humans can do to humans, or storylines woven around the idea of what ETs might do to Earth. There really, when it comes down to it energetically, is no difference. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> thank um, you. That, um, I think, you know, what we're doing here is, is uh, we're trying to, we are having the conversation and, and we're seeing it from as many different perspectives. So when someone who may not be at the awareness of, of or have had the conversation as deep as we've had it comes to us, we can really uh, explore it from any angle and um, have the tools that we need to have that conversation. Like you said, yes. um, I think that's what these interviews and these conversations we're doing now are sort of prepping us for the uh, future conversations to be had. Yes. And thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's a conversation I enjoy quite, quite uh, dearly. <laughs> This is why it is reflected back to you by so many. You see the confirmation of your own excitement, in a sense, reflected back to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so with, with that, uh, continuing on, so, say, disclosure, ETs, uh, the Yael, how uh, we, we sort of touched on this with Widika earlier, but how is the idea of the hybrid children with the current version of the IEL, are you, are you still the, the keepers of the children as a race? Oh, as we explained previously for us just a moment ago, in our earlier conversation, we are caretakers of the majority of them, but some like to travel and some are, you could say, navigating their own direction, not necessarily 
tied to our species so much. They explore, mm. they can stay at Pleiadian caretakers. They can explore different parts of the universe in groups on their own or with another guiding, you could say, quote unquote, parental being with them. There are many who choose to explore in that way, who wish to, from their own excitement, study specific species. And there is no more effective way to study a culture, as you may know yourself, than to have yourself be emerged in it. So mm. some do that. But yes, the majority still is with us. I see. And is there still plans for them to come to Earth and interact with us? There is still that possibility and probability. Yes. Is it a little bit less than when we talked before? Or is it sort of on the same, same type of probability? This is a tricky question because the answer depends per individual listening in. Understand that if we tell you the chances have grown overall, that this may be true for some of the people listening to this particular co-creation and recording at some point in time or right now, and it may not be true for others. So we can't actually say it has moved up or down the scale in that way. It is not black and white like that much more relevant. Would it be for us to reflect back to you that you all do really create your own version of reality and that there are individuals amongst you listening in right now who have a higher probability of seeing that idea come to pass in this lifetime than others, some for whom it is more relevant than for others. I see. Um, how about uh, we're talking about different races and different ideas of different ET races that humanity is interacting with? Uh, recently in my research and in my exploration, a big part of the story is reconnecting to the version of ourselves from Lemuria and this ancient time uh, where um, we went through this, the evolutionary stages, I guess, before the fall and, and a portion of these beings went in, in, into inner earth and continued their spiritual evolution, specifically talking about the beings in like, say, Telos or Shambhala. And um, how does the Ayel interact with these beings or are, is the Ayel actually these beings? You're asking if we are them? Or do you interact with them or, or is an aspect of you part? Because obviously if you're part of us, you got to be a part of them because if we're, you know, we evolved from them, um, how does that all work? If you, if you look at it from that angle, then mm -hmm. yes, you could say that there was a genetic relationship. We are not literally them, just as you right now, your generation on the planet today, mm -hmm. you are you, you are uniquely you, you are perfectly even though perhaps for some people it may not seem to be that way, but you are perfectly equipped for the evolutionary stages that you are currently traveling through individually and collectively. But if you would, for instance, turn the clock back, say only 50 years, that collective had an entirely different energy vibration. So you can literally say, we are them. In that sense, we are on a very different vibrational wavelength, mm, you could say, okay. in orientation. But we are aware of their presence and their love for where you are now and their, you could say, offerings of guidance to your species where you are today, as many species, physical and non-physical, but multidimensionally are right now offering their reflections to humanity to, if you wish to take these gifts, guide you somewhat through the very interesting, you could say, labyrinth that you are currently finding your way through. 
in in regard so in, in regard to the inner earth beings are they one of these races that you mentioned could be one of our first contact races from the inner earth is what yes. you meant yes correct the inner earth beings in a sense our understanding of what that is you know ancient lemurians ancient versions of humanity you know it's we've we've heard that they also have ships and can fly around do they um are they part of this disclosure potential? In a sense, you could say that anything multidimensionally connected to you, interacting with you, or otherwise put, anything multidimensional that is aspect of you, your own greater self, is in the process of disclosing itself to you. It okay. may come from several directions at once, at some point, for some people. It may seem as if their awareness of such higher dimensional realms that appear to be in your earth, but not literally are there. Right, right. And the context with Extra dimensionals such as ourselves may come for some simultaneously, for others from one direction mostly, and so forth. You will travel along the route of least resistance for yourself. You will allow into your version of reality the reflections that you can use on your individual journey most effortlessly, that you can apply, implement, integrate in your own way if you choose to. For the collective, at this point, the idea of looking at the stars, looking up, and receiving information from, quote-unquote, beyond the planet, mm -hmm. has its own value, its own flavor. It has its own symbolic meaning. as in many ways, there has been, of course, a type of tradition in your more mainstream history of choosing to condemn that idea and ignore it and deny it and initially make movies that make that always seem to be the enemy and so forth. Now, this is changing. This is changing. And that transformation process, even in your movie industry, is reflecting back to you the opening of the hearts, the remembrance, the journey that so many of you are now choosing to have unfold within themselves new narratives, new understandings, a broader horizon. And so in that sense, you may perhaps understand that for a lot of people, the idea of popping that specific illusion, that specific non-existing boundary between yourselves and the stars because you are eventually all one has more momentum going to be let's say investigated and researched and in some cases be pushed in a certain narrative if only to get the attention to move into that direction so that you can explore it further together in your own way and with free speech as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And then the idea of extra dimensionals, quote unquote, coming from your own planet, from the ground, from the earth, it has its own flavor, it has its own symbolism, and it will be relevant for some people, but right now, in the gauging of the energy vibration of your population, we see that the momentum is strongest in exploring the idea of people from the stars, the topic of ETs and UFOs or UAPs, however you choose to call them. And then this may eventually, the inner earth information may eventually also come to the surface, but it will be a different route of explanation. Mm -hmm. It has a different level of momentum. And it right now 
speaks to a more select group. But eventually, all will be out in the open. Mm. That too. Your history will be remembered. Awesome. I, I uh, man, I could go on forever. I have so many questions. I do want to open it up to the audience. However, I have one last question. Uh, all right. <laughs> um, so over the years, since I've interacted with you, Arjun, uh, I think you were my first Yael um uh contact you know in the in the in the in this form and fashion um i've interacted with others like sean swanson who um who channels aishua um gita who channels bella there's been other and i've seen and, and heard other yael channelers and they all seem to have a slightly different flavor slightly different um uh, it's very similar in, in, in presentation and accent and ideas, but the story, I, I guess, the Yael story seems to shift from a version. There's different versions of the Yael. Can, do you have anything to say about that? Oh, yes. And thank you for this question. Mm. First of all, and of course, every single channel has their own filters. This mm. channel does it too. There is no, in that sense, human channeler that is completely filter-free if only already when looking at the vocabulary present in a specific individual that we are co-creating with in order to establish these type of transmissions, translations, interpretations, and reflections. So first of all, there is that, there is personality, there is personal journey. And for every type of channeling, you could say, in that way that goes via another individual, it is always good for you as a listener or observer of these transmissions to remember that, first of all, you are speaking with us indirectly. And the prism through which we are being translated always adds some type of coloration. Now then, on top of that, there is also the specific, you could say, we're looking for the translation, blending or composition of every single individual's DNA, as you may have understood by now, after speaking with so many of your channelers, you as human beings have your own palette of colors, every individual has their own composition, even genetically, wherein some lean a little bit more into Pleiadian energy naturally, and some more into Syrian and so forth. Some have a strong affinity towards the idea of the tall whites or Lyrian energy or Anunnaki as well. You could say that when we reach out to you, we always go through what you understand to be your human collective higher self, your collective consciousness, your group consciousness. We go through that filter and then through the non-physical filter as well of the higher self of the channel. And then there is the filter of the interpretation, the choosing of the specific words. So there are a multitude of prisms, you could say, along the way that we interact with. It is possible that Somebody chooses to interact with us and along the way adds their own genetic resonance and harmony with, for instance, the tall wides or Anu Naki. And that to them, the information that we offer comes through as a storyline that has overlap more so with those energy vibrations than with quote-unquote just from us, creating entirely new perspectives, entirely new angles of perception and timelines altogether. So you may, if you will, realize that in speaking to different Yahyal channelers, you are peeking into the version of us that that 
individual is perceiving for their own reasons, mm -hmm. whether they are consciously aware of that or not. I see. Yep. Does that help clear it up a little bit? Yes, it does. Thank you. For example, there may be a pinch of a very ancient extraterrestrial species stirred in with our own, you could say, quote unquote, timeline as we understand it while living it, giving the impression that we are the cedars of Earth, for instance, of Earth, of humanity on Earth. This is not the timeline that is being perceived by the channel before you or that we would share with you. Yet it can be perceived like that for another channel. It aligns simply with other ancient species, if you understand what we're saying. I do. And in sharing that type of perspective, and here's the beauty, that reality is being created as it gains more people who resonate with that. And then you are creating your entirely new universe that has that storyline. So this is how these things, as you choose to channel, every single one of you, whatever you choose to channel, when you share your particular rainbow rays through the unique prisms that are part of your greater self, the way all that is shines through you and is being put into words or translated or interpreted for you and then with others resonating with that this is you creating new worlds with new timelines with new angles this is the creation process up close happening it's it, it's truly uh Thank you for putting it that way, because it truly shows us how uh, powerful creators we are uh, yes. and, and how we are literally making it up from the inside out instead of from the outside in. Yes. Yes. Super, super awesome. Um, all right. Lucas, you want to hop in with a question? Yes, this aligns so perfectly and uh, much gratitude to be able to connect in this way. Um, Thank you. Likewise. You, you mentioned how we all create our own reality. And I was curious, um, there's been a number of movies and shows, The Simpsons, that have had projections of potential futures that have ended up happening at, in very similar ways. And I was curious if, uh, if that was a manifestation of a future, a, a projection of a reality that came to pass, if that caused that future or what might have been at play in that case or in those cases? Oh, thank you so much. You are asking a bit of a chicken and egg question. What came first? You are, in a sense, first of all, many of your artists, many of your screenplay writers, authors, painters, singers, and so forth, and makers of cartoons, and particularly when there is a lot of humor involved, are in fact resonating very openly with that human uh, collective consciousness that we spoke about a little earlier, and are pulling from that field, you could say, particular possibilities. Now, especially when these possibilities, because everything is possible, though not perhaps probable, everything is possible. When these possibilities are being put out, you could say, channeled as a vision or an idea or even a joke through whatever type of media into the world, that is how it gains momentum. So the more people consciously or subconsciously then choose to harmonize with the concept offered to them, in a sense, every single one of them becomes an anchor for the crystallization of that particular idea and allows it to manifest through them. So you can joke yourself into all kinds of circumstances, really. 
Does that help? Very much. That's very interesting. All right. In in creating our reality, do you have um, any additional advice as to um, how we can be more consciously connected to creating the realities we would like to see? By getting to know yourself better. It all comes down to know thyself. The more aware you are of what you are, consciously or subconsciously choosing to resonate with, helps you to navigate your dream reality in a much more awakened state of being and helps you to navigate it with more discernment, with more consciousness. You will see more reflections of that which you choose to be true for you rather than what you just randomly believe must be true for you. Does that assist? Yes. Thank you right. so much. Thank, oh, thank you. you. Go back to Tony. You, you had your hand up before. Hey, do you want to hop in there? Question. Uh, yes. Thank you so much, Ruben. Uh, hi, Arjun. This is Tony Gazi. It's so hi, Tony. Hi. Um, so I had a very personal experience this morning that I've never had before. How uh, exciting. It's very exciting. And I'm like, oh my God. And I actually had my own discernment right now that was different from my other discernment that I had this morning. But let me explain. Um, so I I wake up um, um, and, I, and I look at my phone and it's like literally 8 a.m. I'm like, okay, you know, I have to get up, um, you know, because it just happens at nine. And I go do my things. I take the dogs out. I have some coffee uh, and I'm making my shake. And like 45 minutes later, I look at the clock and it's 7.59 a.m. I could have sworn when I woke up, I saw on my phone 8 a.m. So, so, I mean, like, what happened there? Did I, what happened there? So let me hear your explanation. Crazy. You gave yourself some extra time. Wow. Okay. Uh, meaning, like, did I, because the first explanation I had is that I may have teleported an hour ahead and then, and then I kind of caught up. But as I'm listening to you now, um, like what I heard is I may have, um, like not moved time at all. And I was in the moment for a whole hour and a zero point. I don't know. You can choose to focus on the mechanics and you can choose to focus on the gift. Have you been feeling recently a need for more time? Yeah. That's your gift to yourself. You gave yourself some extra time. It allowed you to become more presently aware of where you are in the here and now moment, doing what you're doing in your morning. And by playing a bit of a trick on the conscious mind. And yes, of course, you could call that making a quantum leap or teleporting yourself in one way or another. But these are, quote unquote, just the mechanics. By having that seem odd or out of the ordinary, you gave yourself a very strong wake up call hint regarding the idea of your need that had been gaining some momentum for a while already to have more time. So you can give it to yourself in a very miraculous way, or you can use a very miraculous way to become more consciously aware of your need and desire and manifest it for yourself in more conscious manners more conscious ways as well that are, well, more fitting in with your time-space reality construct or the belief systems that you have built around that together as a collective. It's up to you. Either way, you gave yourself this reminder, this gift, this wake-up call for you to play with. This is absolutely amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because my schedule is absolutely busy and I'm always working. And for whatever reason, like today, I haven't worked. And this all happened during the day where like literally in five years, I haven't stopped working. Uh, but like today I have completely no clients calling me and, and this happens like so synchronistically, which is beautiful. You opened up this space. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you yourself for gifting this to you and 
choose how you wish to perpetuate the energy vibration that you are feeling now with this space that is available to you. Awesome. I'm sweating for whatever reason. I'm in the basement. It's so cold here, but I'm literally. You're choosing that particular physical, you could say, release to allow yourself a deeper realization again with a bit of a wing to go with the flow. You are such a blessing. Thank you. I'm doing the prayer mode with one hand because I'm holding the other. So, so thank you. Thank you for all your gifts and, and um, love and light. And of course, Robin, thank you for everything that you do. It's absolutely amazing. Thanks, Our unconditional Tony. love to you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You're you're not the only one uh, su sweating, um, Tony. I every time I get on these calls, my, yeah. this is a habit. And then and then I'm back here working, and I don't sweat the rest of the day. It's crazy. So whenever uh, I'm like I'm like, the hot seat, okay. I know my coffee is doing some stuff. Okay, you're, you're not alone. <laughs> For many of you, the physical sensation of the rise in temperature also reflects to you in a playful manner your rise in vibration there we Hi. go awesome i'm getting vibed high vibed every sunday um sophia go ahead hi yeah i uh, hi june i had a couple Hello. of very a couple of uh, personal questions actually similar to um to tiny that stem from a conversation i had with Ishwa. actually what we are right. true sean Thompson. Um, I mentioned a, a sighting that I'd had, uh, with, um, that involved the star Capella. And he said to me that that region holds one of your planets. Um, uh, I don't know. Is that correct? You said you had a sighting involving that region. How do you mean exactly? Just, I saw what kind of looked like shooting stars. Around circling around um, Capella, just when I looked up at it one night. One moment. Have you looked up the symbolical meaning of that region of that star? Either uh, through your concepts of astrology or otherwise. I've read some, but I could probably do more research. Oh, we're not telling you what to do. It's just a suggestion because what we are getting from this sharing is that in the moment of that sighting, that information was relevant for you, the symbol connected to that region, to that star. And the idea of our planet being located there was more a Weaving, you could say, of the homecoming sensation that you felt in that interaction with the IL vibration and the, you could say, message you sent to yourself when you had this sighting. The weaving came through as if our home was there or in that direction. It yeah, not is literally that case. You can play with this however you wish. If you feel that the thought of our planet potentially being in that direction excites you, please go right ahead and picture us there. But if you wish, you can also explore deeper and see how that information as a symbol and the homecoming sensation that was in you, and the curiosity that still is in you, all tie together when you find meaning that has right now been partially still, not completely, but partially hidden from the conscious mind. You're playing, like most of you, a game of hide and seek. Does that assist you? Yes. And all right. It might be related to another thing that you said to me about having a had an in utero DNA implantation from some from a light race that you could only describe as blue. And I'm still none the wise as to what that is or what I'm meant to to do with it. Is it meant to be of any sort of service? And how do I 
go about utilizing that. Oh, thank you for picking up on the energy vibration of the idea of service, because that is what we see too. When you asked this question, when you had that conversation, if we lead to that encounter and also up to this part right now, has there been in you some desire of sharing something with the world, something creatively flowing from you that you have not? verbalized to, let's say, not just your closest friends, but also the outside world? Is there a desire to share something that you've been holding back in? Well, I suppose the only creativity is something I struggle with, but also that I, I may be blocking something there, but I suppose the other thing I've been doing is a lot of, well, bits and pieces of healing. I probably don't share enough. <laughs> or there's no have to, you, there's no must or should in no way. When you say creativity, what is the direction that you naturally lean into most effortlessly? Are you talking about visual writing, singing, dancing? What is it? Well, uh, probably, <laughs> probably all three of them are sexually writing, singing and dancing. Yeah. All right. So is there, you could say a storyline that is at the tip of your tongue, but isn't completely coming out just yet? I'm, no, I think I must be stuck somewhere and I've got it. And that is me to work on. Well, work, stuck, these are all very heavy terms you're using in your current choice of definition. In looking at these things, we would say, if you wish, if you resonate with this idea to play, first of all, more lightly with the definitions that you have chosen so far so that you can give yourself a bit of a break, take some of the load off your shoulders. And then by, for instance, this may be for assistance to anybody else listening in that feels they haven't gotten to doing something that they've been desiring to do for a long time. Instead of defining yourself as having failed to do that up until now, for instance, Say, I have chosen to play with the idea of not doing that up until now. So then at least your definition sounds as if you've gotten something out of it. It was an experience and you chose to have it. In that way, you grab your, you could say self-empowerment, you get your power back, you gift it to yourself yet again. You put the situation in your hands and you can feel more self-empowered in choosing your next step along the way in the next activity you choose to give your attention to in that manner. Now, back to the idea of the blue ray. You could say that the idea of this conception is about the divinely inspired, creative imagination that is uniquely yours, that you felt a desire to express more openly, but haven't chosen to explore just yet in that way. You see, we're deliberately putting the new definition in place right away for you, if that's okay. You saw this, or it was reflected back to you as something that was, quote unquote, put in the womb because it had to do with a lot of emotions still connected to this idea of your creative expression and also the idea of birthing, obviously, and it being born through you. And lastly, the color blue also cross-connects to the idea of your throat chakra. And this is why we are referring to a storyline that writing or speaking or singing might all be parts of that you have something to share that nobody else can share exactly in that manner. You are inspired to take action on that and you are free to choose the divine timing for that. Explore the limiting beliefs that have been keeping you, quote unquote, or that you have been choosing to put in your own way up until now. As an experience, explore those and you could say, 
cut the wires from those little minds on your path so that they are no longer coming across to the rational mind as explosives. So that you will feel the path is safe and open for you to dance and sing upon. Does that assist you? It assists me very much. Thank you very, very much, Adrian. Oh, thank you so very, very much. We send you our unconditional love. Arjun, are we okay to go for two more questions? Bring it on. Okay. Mark, hop in here. Hello. Great to Hello. talk with you. Likewise. Uh, for me, it's it's a given that I'm on a timeline of ascension, merging with the galactic community, merging with the inner earth beings. That's all just guaranteed. Um, oh, thank you. But you mentioned that it's not necessarily set for everybody. And so I'm often curious, because I understand that I create my reality and I understand the timeline that I'm on. Um, and, and for me, it's, it's like, a, like Ruben's, you know, concerned about, you know, the fear of the media and stuff like that. For me, it's like a no-brainer. It's a done deal that it's, I don't have to be concerned about that at all. And so I'm curious, though, is there, are there different timelines that others in this current Earth consciousness are going to go on that, you know, that won't be having those experiences? And, and if so, are we, are we always splitting off into, into different timelines or are these different timelines kind of just occurring simultaneously on the planet? Like, for instance, there are people on the planet now that believe the Earth is flat. Um, and, and, you know, they have a very strong belief about that. And so potentially, you know, will I be able to just be working with galactic beings and stuff on the planet at the same time that there are other people who continue to just be on a timeline and on the planet where there are no alien beings interacting with anybody? All right. Thank you for this. First of all, there is a lot of things we can choose to reflect upon that you've given to us. First of all, all time is simultaneous. There is an ongoing splitting off. It never ends in that way. And it never began either. It is ongoing. It is truly infinite. There are, okay, let's put it this way. Probabilities of realities coexisting on your quote unquote and by that we mean your version of Earth as you're choosing to co-create it from one moment to the next. There are probabilities of different angles of perception in a specific bandwidth that are either harmonious or not harmonious coexisting right now, and you are aware of this. That is what is changing. That is what is meant by the awakening or shift into a higher dimensional reality. This bandwidth is shifting. You allow it to manifest through you. You are revealing that version of Earth if you choose to look at your journey from a higher vibrational perspective. You are allowing that version of Earth where people are more harmoniously connected to each other, vibrating more in unconditional love on a higher level of consciousness without saying this without any judgment to any other step of the consciousness ladder that one can choose to travel through and all the gifts that come with that. So you could say that the shifting that has taken place is a shifting of bandwidth, a shifting of your entire color palette, where perhaps to give you an analogy from an artistic point of view, the more darker colors, 
the blacks and the dark browns have been integrated to such a degree, not pushed out, not expelled, but integrated to such a degree that they automatically turn into a higher vibration or lighter coloration, so to speak. Pushing or allowing, better said, the entire palette to move into a different color scheme and then adding as you are opening, uh, you could say, your vision to that degree. Adding colors that perhaps, as an analogy, you might call fluorescent or some glitters, if you will, that sparkle the light back to you, real obviously, some golds and silvers. This is the quote unquote splitting. Now, you began your question by asking Are there those that will never see open contact? And yes, there are. And even you just allowing yourself to come up with that as an idea, as a possibility, in a sense, lets you know that must be a timeline for you could not perceive it if not in one way or another, it had some type of reality connected to it. It just depends to what level this is being played out within your vision, how much of that reality or version of reality you will get to see or not. This is your shifting of your window. You will individually do that. And as you do that, you will, you could say, in the blink of an eye, constantly, every single nanosecond, allow into your conscious awareness the crystallization of the collective that adds to that individual journey for you. You shift collectives, you shift the window, you shift the bandwidth, you shift your color palette. All colors exist, all colors are valuable, are needed for the exploration of the one, to get to know itself again and again and again from an infinite amount of angles of perception. This is what wanted to come through most on that particular question. Does that assist you? Yes. And so, so I'm curious, so I guess there could be a point when, cause I know, I know from my reality, I definitely, that can definitely be of course, very unique, but then there's the co-created reality and like where multiple of uh, multiple people are seeing, like say the president of the U S and, and so I guess there will be, there is the possibility that there will be simultaneously groups of people who are seeing the president of the U S having open contact and then other people seeing the president not having open contact and, and all of this can be occurring simultaneously. In parallel universes, yes, on your focus point of one Earth, not likely. The example that you're giving right now, not likely. By the time that you are, you are, those that allow themselves to shift to that version of Earth, by the times that you are ready to perceive open contact, the ones that cannot see that, will not see that, that level of resistance will most likely have been split off by then. If you understand what we mean by that. Split off into a parallel reality? Into a different bandwidth of perception. You will have shifted yourself into a specific bandwidth of perception. If you see a public person having open contact and this information being shared with your globe through your media, as in the, this example is perhaps what you mean, then the observers of that will, if you're truly ready for that level of open contact, all be seeing the contact taking place. Now, the thoughts that they have about that, the emotions that it brings up in them, that may differ greatly. But you're saying there may be some that can't see it at all whilst it is happening. And that would be unlikely. We are taking you very literally in your example. Right. You're, and as we understand your example, you're talking about 
a version of Earth where the president, so a public figure, is having right. open contact, shaking the hand of an alien, if you wish to put it that way. And some people be, being able to see that and others literally not being able to see that. That is unlikely. Does that help? Yes. All right. Does it make a difference to you whether this would have been the case or not? Just our curiosity. You know, I guess it doesn't really. Um, oh, thank you. Because it's, it's all. Because it's all it doesn't just, really. No, it's just, it's all this. What am I creating? Period. Yes. Yes. Is that relevant for you as an idea? That is the more important question, really. All right. But still fun playing with you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Are we good for one last question? Yes, if you are. Okay. Well, it's up to Will. Hey, so how, how's it going? Thank you both so much for this experience. My question is the same as a couple of weeks ago. And um, what can you share with us humans at this time that most excites you that we're ready to uh, kind of start understanding? Well, thank you. In a nutshell, it would be to invite you to ask yourselves what most excites you. To allow yourself to ask yourselves that question. Our highest excitement is to just share what we are sharing. We do not care really what you choose to do with it. We can see, however, that if you choose to allow yourself to follow your own highest excitement, as you may have heard us say and many other, you could say, beings of our species and other hybrid lineage, brothers and sisters, through other channels as well. When you allow yourself to follow your own highest excitement in every single here and now moment, without pushing or pulling and to the best of your ability, taking it as far as you can take it, without insisting or having any type of assumption towards what the outcome should be and remaining in a positive state of mind regarding the reflections that you receive back along the way, that will bring you that which is most relevant for you as an individual and as a collective in your current times of transitions. We understand it may not be much of a news flash or inspiring message, perhaps, because you may have heard this so many times before, but it really does come down to that. And instead of reinventing the wheel, there is more power in just reminding you of the most direct root of least resistance than inventing other ones that might just distract you. You understand? Yeah, thank you. That really speaks to me on a personal level right now. That's awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Then perhaps that is why you got it. <laughs> so in your face. <laughs> we love you unconditionally. Thank you. Uh, we love you back. Thank you. And, uh, and, and thank you, Arjun. I think that, uh, you know, I, I love these interactions and, and, uh, I'm sure we'll be doing more, are we? Maybe you could peek into our future and see some we more. We can say, see you again, yet again. Awesome. I was hoping you'd say that. Thank you for doing what you do, for offering the platform that you offer. Thank you to every single one uh, tuning in and listening in for being a co-creator in your own way, for being on uh, this miraculous journey of transformation. We are honored and rejoiced to be a part of this journey and wish you all a brilliant, bright rest of your day. Namaste. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, <laughs> as you come back, I'm just going to share what was coming. This is sort of to Will's question and I sort of reading into the question a little bit. Um, you know, everything is a two-way pump. So what, you know, you're, there's always an exchange and I feel sometimes there is, 
the, these uh, these interactions with our um, space alien brothers or Earth people, whatever. There's this. There's so much received in these transa- transactions and tr- transmissions that <laughs> transactions. It is a transaction, and I think that's the idea. Is the transmission we're receiving a lot? So what is it that we're giving back to these beings? What it, there must be some sort of energy exchange, and I've wondered that and and asked that myself. And what I found, especially from let's say the hybrid. Uh, the hybrid races, the hybrid lineages, is perhaps the idea of um, their timelines, their uh, history. Let's say from the, uh, the you know the the Zeta or the Gray history, where they t- abducted humans and took the whole thing and had all that. There's this heaviness that comes with that story, and this. Um, coming back to give service to the humans in this way, in a sense, perhaps is a way of lightening this, that, that story. And, and, and then us humans saying, okay, it's not so, you know, look at how uh, benevolent in giving these beings that were created from these traumatic situations. So therefore there's this, um, lightening of the energy in a sense, and that is helping them release this human attachment to that story um, of this uh, malevolence that we were taking against our will. Am I making any sense when I'm going this th- down these rabbit holes with this th- way of thinking? So they're giving in a sense. This energy exchange is their karma is being released in these exchanges of uh, karma or attachment to the heavy story is being released in their givingness of uh, information that we're able to take in and have all this positive uh, vibes from. Is that making any sense? Absolutely. That's okay, resonating okay. very okay. deeply. And I'm smiling because they're still so close. Um, and I got, it's the physicalization in this storyline Mm-hmm. of the hybridization it's the physicalization like literally the crystallization of birthing light from darkness mm-hmm. integrating to such a degree that uh what seems to be our darkest shadow possible future the gray timeline mm-hmm. uh ends up giving gifting us uh if only symbolical just for people who are like more skeptical about the physical part if only symbolical the children uh that bring the light that bring the news that bring the new way the new possibilities and of course it's not depending on the hybrids uh, there's so many uh, species that are sharing uh this possibility for us and with us and it's within us is what arjun always stresses as well we create that he once said um something along the lines of we are dreaming each other up so we we imagine them into our really uh, reality mm-hmm. and the other way around so mm-hmm. picture that so there must have been a desire so this is just my specul- speculation okay mm-hmm. um imagine that something or someone that was born in a really high uh, vibrational reality wanted to dream up apparently <laughs> a history or origin story where there is lots of strife and struggle. Mm -hmm. They wanted to be of service. I I am sure that, I mean, as we all know, by the way, um, if you're good at something, say you're, you make a really, really good curry, (laughs) like you're a good cook or you're good with animals or whatever, your plants, a garden. Um, it's one thing to do it yourself. Um, and expert in that at some point. And then it's a whole other thing to teach it to other people. So being a teacher is another way of becoming a student. And I really feel that many of the entities and beings that are choosing to speak with us and reflect to us where we are at are learning how to be teachers and are integrating that in their own journey in one way or another. It's you know, yep. something I can imagine might be the case. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Absolutely. This is this. This is the same with me, and you know, and sharing in this way. It's a service to the self to see others grow in their own unique ways because they're uplifting frequency and the vibration of the reality that we're existing in. And this is why, you know, this idea of, um, the, I think the new paradigm of the new earth that we're shifting into of, uh, you know, more of uh, helping the other, another person, obviously still containing your own sovereignty and your own um, power. But when your cup is full, then you help the other person. Before we had this idea where we were sort of entrained and taught that helping service to others is the ultimate sacrifice, right? You got mm. you have to um, help everybody else before you help yourself. Mm. And then what we ha what happened is we had a whole society, and we have a whole society of big hearted people that end up giving away their own power, mm. and then it brings everything down. Mm -hmm. When we just flip that role, when it's the same thing, it's fill your cup up first. And then once you're full, then you can start sharing with everybody else. And that doesn't make you selfish or mean or, you know, self-serving or whatever. It, well, you are self-serving, but you're self-serving so you can help the other people. Yeah. And, and I think that that mentality and that idea is what we're moving into now. We've, we're getting away from, you know, religious guilt and all these other things. And we just went through another wave of the jab saying is like, do this so you can save grandma and all this other <laughs> shit that now we know is bullshit. And, um, and, and it's, uh, and we're like, no, you know, take care of yourself, take your vitamins, get your immunity up, do, do what you need to do so you can then go and help other people. So anyways, I think that ties along with these beings coming down to help us because yeah. once our reality gets up an octave, then they can use that to go to the next level. And as you like the teacher analogy, the teacher, once everybody else is, you know, has the information and is, you know, on their own feet, then the teacher can go off to the mountains and go yeah. do another pilgrimage, yeah. you know, and, and feel confident that when he comes back down from the mountain, the, the, the village isn't uh, being raped and pillaged. It's like doing good. Everybody's eating good. It has their, um, their sustainable gardens and everything. And okay, I'm going to go do my pilgrimage and you guys chill and we'll come back and we'll do this all over again. You know, that yeah. kind of idea. Yes. And then there is no codependency and there is a right. good balance and there is a good understanding, a sense of self. And when you take that time to take care of you, mm -hmm. uh, it's like watering you know, the plants. And by the time that, that you see the flowers are blooming, that's when everybody around you will enjoy the blooming flowers. Absolutely. And it's so much more fun and so much more radiant than if you're with those little sprouts and you're like, I have to save the world and completely <laughs> exhausting yourself and the plants are withering because you forgot yeah. to alter them and yeah. it would just leave you exhausted. So I, I do think a lot of people are are learning that now, particularly yeah. since it seems like time is speeding up and we're, we have all these uh, societal obligation stories running in the background. And it is so endlessly interesting. I'm absolutely fascinated with this world. <laughs> it, it's, moving, it's moving super fast. Yeah. Uh, Tony, you want to hop in? You have something to say? Or add? Yes. Okay. Hi, guys. Uh, <laughs> hi, where to go? Hi. So, uh, so look, just listening to all this, I keep hearing Bashar and like the end of my, um, you know, antennas of my like kind of <laughs> consciousness that we love to complicate things, right? We're masters of complications or masters of 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 um of limitation. Uh, and like what I keep hearing is, look, everything that we're talking about, all these experiences, all these facts are like literally like facets of all that is, like facets of facets of facets of facets within an inch degree, an inch degree of all that is. And it's all beautiful in its own right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and it just depends what you choose in a sense to kind of, you know, experience or go down the rabbit hole, whichever rabbit hole that you want to go into. If you want to just live in a, in a world of everything is great, everything is fine, you know, or like whatever. Uh, but it's all facets of all that is. Um, you know, in a very simple level without like dissecting what each facet is and why and how come and all the, you know, all the questions that we normally ask. Uh, anyhow, I just wanted to share on, in, in, in like a very simplistic way that it's just like part of everything, like, and like without us being able, like 
um, to perceive, uh, in a sense, others like perception, all those other facets that others are seeing that we're seeing through them, we wouldn't be able to be, in a sense, part of all that is. Hopefully mm -hmm. that, that makes sense, you know? Yeah. So anyhow, yeah. Yeah. just yeah. to have a quick. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. Good stuff. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's all, all of it is relevant. And uh, even if we perceive something as minute or why are they doing that? So there's still relevancy to that person. And in in, in like Arjun said, it, it must be just having the idea in the, uh, so the idea of, like Mark said, a world of non-disclosure, there's still some, even though he's definitely not on that timeline, don't worry, Mark, I know you're not on that timeline, but uh, there, that, that timeline exists, it won't be part of our reality, but just the perception of it, um, there must be a part of that in us still, there's still some doubt, there's still some things to work on, there's still some, you know, we're still working through that, that, that storyline. And, uh, and it's relevant as, as irrelevant as, you know, a non-disclosure reality is for all of us. I don't think that's even part of our timeline, but we're having the conversation. So something's there. It's, 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 it's relevant. It's irrelevant, but it's relevant. And it's, uh, and now I'm overcomplicating and <laughs> Tony's oh, like, I just said simplify. <laughs> yeah. I think the fact that we can see people who have, uh, severe doubts or, 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 you know, um, with the whole idea of even alien existence at all, you know, anything being outside of this planet. Um, and we can see those people going through their process. Uh, how gorgeous is that? What a deepening does that add to our journey? Um, just, you know, of course, you know, assuming that <laughs> they're all, you know, really believing there's something there. Um, it deepens, you know, whatever you believe you're in contact with, uh, and I'm pointing up, even though it's, you know, multidimensional and so there's really not even direction or location, but whatever we personally believe is true for us, seeing others that believe the opposite is a deepening of the journey. Uh, I am grateful for seeing the contrast, the way I am observing it right now in the world. I know it has relevance, whatever anybody is thinking about anything. And if it triggers me, I need it to have that sensation. And it, it just helps me uh, look at myself. Why am I triggered? What is this saying about myself and my own set of beliefs? And is there some room for love yeah. there? Most likely so. <laughs> well, it's, it's a deep lesson in compassion, understanding, yeah, exactly. forgiveness, and um, unjudgment. You know, these are these are great lessons um uh, that are being presented to us you know for the, us who think we have the answer and we know this is the way and this you know, come on everybody what are you doing get in line why are you dragging your ass <laughs> um but then it's like whoa, whoa whoa that's not the right way it's like no we're all in this together come on so thank you Wittica. that was just as much as before if not more very powerful and very um empowering Oh, thank you so much, yeah, Ruben, um, yeah. for your ongoing uh, conversations. Yeah, also yeah. An, an energy investment in this entire oh. journey. And it's beyond valuable, like, really. So thank you so much for that. And it was my uh, big uh, pleasure to be on this, you know, co-creation with yeah. you and everybody else uh, who uh, tuned in. Um, well, we were able to do this because of everybody, you know, that I'm able to keep this, this gig up because everybody has been so supportive over the years, uh, you know, mm -hmm. through, um, before it even got to Gaia and then Gaia opened the audience and then you guys coming here on here. So we're, the com yeah. conversations being, uh, continued because again, it's, it's a co-creation, co-collective movement. Yes. Um, and where the collective asks, there is an answer being offered. And whether we see it or not, it's there. So you're just making visible what we all already pulled in, in a way. Mm -hmm. And the other way around, you're receiving answers to your own. <laughs> uh, whatever desires are there flowing Probably. to you. So I just love the, the harmony, the co-creation of all of it. And how we are 
and now you are with this platform uh, also always stirring it back to um, inclusion and non-judgmental um, attitudes. I really deeply appreciate that. That's so, so a, f- a breath of fresh air. I love it. <laughs> it, it is, it is. And it's, uh, it's, I hope where we can continue to grow in this. I hope it's a, it's a, a, br- uh, a part of air that more people embrace and, and they are, it's, it's happening. I'm seeing it yeah. happen Easy. for sure. Um, so before we go, you, you have some other projects, anything going on? Uh, you had an art project you, you mentioned, um, that, that you're working on what, what's, what's happening. What can people uh, look forward to? Uh, in, in the, <laughs> the life of Wiedeka? Um, So there's a bunch of things and I'm kind of like dividing my time among the different things. Uh, some events are coming up as well. I've been working for two years now with the Dutch platform, actually releasing monthly one and a half hour in-depth Arjun channelings in Dutch, yeah. uh, which has grown the audience in the Netherlands uh, quite a bit, awesome. which is really interesting for me as well as I've been approached by television four times now I oh, always wow. pull poli- I've politely declined because I <laughs> television. All right. So um, podcasts, I resonate with that idea, but as long as it is, you know, uh, from integrity, uh, mm-hmm. I, I currently don't resonate with the bigger um, commercial platforms in that mm-hmm. way. But it's been interesting for me as a journey to see it grow in my own tiny country. Mm-hmm. And um, so events are coming up. Also in English, a live stream will soon be online it will be on my you know just my website design for awareness.com and then slash events a live stream agenda. like 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 this one like this... yes oh, okay yes. great it will be one of those uh, soon upcoming um uh, in september awesome. and hope- hopefully more after that it's been a bit quiet during the whole lockdown time um but also because i started writing a book <laughs> oh wow and, and um i'm also kind of like rewriting an illustrated poetry book that i wrote in 2013 that i oh, now okay. suddenly feel i want to share so there's like that going on wow um okay and i hope to eventually uh, make some type of library where in english where also bigger um you know like downloads can be uh found on the websites but we're, we're oh. setting up i'm setting up the the fundament for all of these things. I uh, see. It's just I'm enthusiastic about so many things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I know <laughs> so the that, feeling. You know, I'm like going in different directions. And so yeah. overall, yeah. it doesn't seem to be moving very fast. But then suddenly, I will probably launch everything at once. That's probably what it's going to look like. And this will uh, this all be launched on your website? Is it for awareness? Uh, definitely. And of course, you can, uh, I guess, scroll to the homepage of sign for awareness.com and sign mm-hmm. up for the newsletter it's probably the easiest way to stay uh up to date with any developments here about these things Perfect. uh I, I don't spam uh because i simply i don't even have the you know focus for that <laughs> so it will be um four newsletters a year maximum so it's oh, a very safe newsletter yeah. to, <laughs> to sign up for and you can always unsubscribe if you think it's boring yeah. anyway so i'm just saying that's probably the quickest way because if a thing like a book or something, if it's finalized, right. I will definitely send out a newsletter and then put it on the Facebook page and so on. Perfect, perfect. And yeah. you, and you you had mentioned to me privately about your art. Is that something that's opening up to it's the on, public more? Yeah, a big bunch of it is on the website. The okay. originals. I'm putting a lot of originals up for sale now, which uh, okay. first I just never did. So it wasn't like my whole house was <laughs> fitting. Wow. Up. Uh, okay. but now, but now I'm putting them up for sale and I feel it's time, you know, for new canvas to, to be created and others to flow into the hands of loving caretakers. Um, Deep. yeah, yep. who want to adopt a painting. Yeah. Uh, and possibly at some point I may be, uh, offering prints as well, but that's like a more technical thing that I am looking for people to assist me with. How if that you works. go one level <laughs> technical. You can go NFT. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that yet. <laughs> oh, you didn't? Okay. Well, there. The seed is no, planted. No. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. There is so much digital that you could do in this world right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do really do love to work with my hands. Um, so the actual physical paintings 
it, it hasn't worked my heart in it, I guess. Well, no, so, you keep you keep doing that, but then you just do the NFT on top of that. So it's on top of it, that. Well, uh, it I, turns into an NFT, and then when you do both, you sell both, and it's there's advantages to that as well. So, maybe I'll run into somebody who can help me then figure I, that out how that's actually done. Yeah, I can I can <laughs> explain the concepts to you. Okay, next crypto class, guys. And so now I'm announcing it here. We're gonna talk about NFTs, how they work and how they're changing in the revolution that's happening right now. So, but thank you again. You got so many cool things from your sharing. And um, like Arjun said, I'm sure we will do it some more. <laughs> yes, signing up for that. Thank cool, you cool. and everybody. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and thanks for going the extra time. We went like super over our usual yeah. time. Oh, so, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope you like this interview. We actually do this every week on my membership portal page. You can access it through interviewwithed.org or uh, click on the link uh, somewhere in here. I'll put a link and uh, come over and join us. You too can ask questions. Every week we have new special guests and you get to ask questions directly to the channelers and to the beings that they channel. So see you in the portal.